So just like before, this is defined as some kind of limit. It's defined as the limit as t goes to infinity of the integral from 0 to t. And this integral converges exactly when this limit converges. So again, we have to investigate these integrals where t uh, goes to infinity. So integrating this, we have to use some substitution, say u equals x squared plus 5. We know this will work because there's an x on top. So we have du is 2x dx, uh, 1 half du equals x dx. So the integral, it goes from 0 to t, and we have 1 half du over u squared. And an antiderivative of 1 over u squared is negative 1 over u. Oops. So I should have changed my bounds. <coughs> or leave them as x values. When x is 0, oh, that 5 right there. Start. <coughs> When x is 0, u is 2, and when x is t, u is t squared plus 2. So I have 1 half, negative 1 over u, going from 2, t squared plus 2. And this is equal to... negative 1 over t squared plus 2 minus negative 1 half. <laughs> so now we need to know, does the limit of this exist? So So we look at this, um, as t goes to infinity, this goes to infinity, we have 1 over infinity, which goes to 0, and 1 half doesn't do anything, so we get 1 half times 1 half. So the original integral converges to 1 fourth. Now let's look at some examples where we're integrating a function that may be discontinuous in the interval that you're integrating over. So let's try integral from 0 to 3 of 1 over x times square root of x. And this function is not continuous at x equals 0 because it goes to infinity there. <laughs> so the way we try to get around that is we define this as a limit, just like before. But now we approach the bad point as opposed to approaching infinity. We go, say, t goes to 0 from the right. So we're integrating from t to 3 of, of this. So it's best to look at this integral separately. This is just x to the 3 halves 
So an antiderivative of this, I'll add 1 to the exponent and divide by that number. Well, the whole thing is x to the negative 3 halves. So I'll get uh, 1 over negative 1 half, x to the negative 1 half, from t to 3. Let's see, I really have negative 2, 3 to the negative 1 half, minus t to the negative 1 half. And this is just Now we want to see if the limit of this exists. Let's see, uh, well the constant term doesn't do anything. As t goes to zero, one over the square root of t is going to infinity, negative of that going negative infinity, negative of that's going to infinity. This goes to infinity, so the limit does not exist. The original improper integral diverges. And we can't make sense of any value of it. Well, now let's do an example where uh, we have a discontinuous function and the limit we get turns out to actually exist. So let's go from 1 to 9 and look at the cube root of x minus 9 dx. This is discontinuous when x is 9 because the bottom goes to 0. So it's defined as this limit. The limit as t goes to 9 from the left of the integral from 1 to t of the original thing. <laughs> So we can just evaluate this. Um, an antiderivative of this, well, let's rewrite it. It's x minus 9 to the negative 1 third. So an antiderivative, add 1 to the exponent and divide by that. So I get 1 over 2 thirds x minus 9 to the 2 thirds from 1 to t. So we get 3 halves, plug in t, I get t minus 9 to the 2 thirds minus what I get when I plug in 1, I get negative 8 to the 2 thirds uh, negative 8 to the 2 thirds. I take um, cube root, I'll get negative 2, and I square that, I get 4. So the limit of this, uh, we have to look at this thing. Uh, taking cube roots and squaring negative things is no big deal. Um, it's perfectly fine when, when t equals 9. This thing is continuous. So we can just plug in 9, this goes to 0, and this is just a number so it stays where it is, and we get negative 3 halves times 4, which is just negative 6. So this time the improper integral converges to negative 6.